Hey, this is Josh from Leak Dev, where we try to explain Leak Problem as simple and concise as we can. Today, we're going to look at the generated parentheses problem, where we will be using recursive backtracking to generate all possible answers. According to Leak Code, in the past six months, this question has been infrequently appearing in all of the five big tech companies, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Apple. If anything, knowing how to do recursive backtracking will be very helpful. Given n as an input, we want to write a function to generate all combination of n well-formed parentheses. So for example, in example one, we have three. So we want to generate all possible parentheses that has three pairs of open and closed parentheses. In example two, we're given one, and we want to create all possible combination that has one pair of open and closed parentheses. The goal of this problem is to form all possible combination of parentheses with a pair of n, which in this case is three. Now, how can we do this? Well, usually when a problem says to generate all combinations, the first immediate thought should be a recursive backtracking solution. We won't go through a full example, but we'll go through an intuition of what this will look like. We start with a open parentheses. Note, we can't start with a closing parentheses because we can't form a pair of valid parentheses. So with our open parentheses, we have two choices. We can either add in our parentheses, like so, or close the parentheses. I'll just continue on this path. So we continue adding parentheses, open parentheses. And then at this point, we don't have much of a choice anymore because we have three open parentheses and our n is three. So we can only close our parentheses now, which then would give us our first possible answer right here. Now, at this point, we have a solution, but we can walk backwards and see if we can build up other solutions. So we still can't do anything at three open parentheses. But then once we go back to two open parentheses, we now have more possibilities. We can now try and see what happens when we close the parentheses. At this point, we can branch off again and we have, we have two different possibilities we can try. We can open another parentheses or we can close the parentheses. At this point, we already have three open parentheses, so we have to close everything, which would give us our answer, which would be a second valid answer. And then if we go back up, we can try the possibility of what happens if we close in our parentheses. And then we kind of, and then we would just repeat this pattern until we try every single possible combination. There's a lot of possible combination that can be made, so I won't go through the full example, but we get an idea of how recursive backtracking works. To formalize the example that we just went through, whenever we have a recursion problem, we need to define our states, base case, and recursive case. The, the first state that we have is our current string, which is just the string that we are building as we go through our recursion, which will then eventually become our answer. The second state we need to worry about is the number of open parentheses that we have used. This is important so we know when to stop after we open n parentheses. And then in the third state, we need to pass the number of closed parentheses because we don't want to close more parentheses that we have open. Now, when defining our recursive function, we have a base case, which is when we know we've reached the end of our recursive call. And that base case is when the number of parentheses that we have equals n. You notice in our example, uh, when we reached three open parentheses, we just automatically closed it. And that's because we know at this point guaranteed that we can't open any more parentheses. So this, so this string is our only answer that we can generate with three open parentheses. Now, in our recursive case, as you recall, we can do two things. We start with one parenthesis, for example. We can only add a parenthesis and increment the number of open parentheses that we had, or we can close the parentheses and then increment the number of closed parentheses that we have. Now, we can only close the parentheses if we have more open parentheses than closed parentheses. And then just following these recursive functions, we just gradually build out our answer like we have done in an earlier example. Now that we understand the rough idea of what our state, base case, and recursive case is needed to implement our function, I want to talk a bit about our algorithm. 
initially, I thought the algorithm was O of 2 to the power of n, because for every n pairs we want to make, we have two choices. We either open a parenthesis or we close a parenthesis. Well, turns out I was dead wrong, and this is not the answer. It turned out that the answer is actually something far more complex. It is O to the 4 to the power of n over the square root of n. Now, I think this is far more complex than you would ever tackle or answer in a normal interview. However, if you're curious, I've added some links to the description below that talks about the runtime of generating combinatorials. The space would also be the same because we would be using, because we would be creating that many n elements. So now that we got the algorithm out of the way, let's go to the live code. The first thing we need to do is to define our list that we will return as our answer. Then we need to define our helper function, which would generate all possible combination of parentheses and add them into our list. Like we talked about earlier, we would pass in the string that we are building up that will eventually add into our answer once we hit our base case. We pass in the number of open parentheses, which right now is zero. We pass in the number of closed parentheses, which is zero. And then we pass in n which represents the number of pairs that we have to build. After we finish going through our helper function, we just need to return our answer. Now let's define our helper function. So on the whiteboard, currently, we started off with, our, with the beginning. We have zero open parentheses zero close parentheses, and we're at empty string. And we're at an empty string. Now, in our helper function, we need to first define our base case. What's our base case? When we have the same number of open parentheses as n. Once we have two open parentheses, then at this point, we can't open anymore. So the only thing we can do is we can only close them. So that's exactly what we do. We'll just create a for loop from close all the way to n, and then just and then finish building up our string and then adding that into our answer. And then now that we define our base case, all we need to do is define our recursive case. Like I mentioned, there are two things that we need to do in our recursive case. Try what happened. Like I mentioned, there are two things we need to try in our recursive case. And they are add our open parentheses and try what happens when we add a closing parentheses. Note that in the code, we are adding the string. We are passing in the concatenation of string plus the open parentheses so that our string value still stays the same, which means we can reuse it in our, in our second case when we backtrack without needing it to modify the given string values again. Now for our second case, it's a bit special. We can only do that when we have less closed parentheses than we have open parentheses. Otherwise, we won't be able to form a correct string. And then when we close parentheses, we also make sure to increment our close by one. Now at this point, we've completed our code. Let's just quickly walk through what happens. So at this point, we passed in 0, 0 and our empty string. So that's not our base case yet because 0 is not 2. So we go to our else case. We try our first recursive function and we append an open string. That will give us an open string. And then we add 1 to our open. So we get 1, 0. And then in the next recursive function down over here, we it's not our, we haven't hit our base case, so we go back to our recursive case and we do the exact same thing. We add another open parentheses and we increment our open by one. And that brings us here. Now at this point, we've hit our base case. Our open is now equal to n, 
So all we need to do is append our closing parentheses, add it into our answer. So our first answer is to open and then to close. And then we exit this recursive frame. Go back up to just one open parentheses. And then because our close parentheses zero is less than our open parentheses, which is one, we can try the recursive function when we close a string. So we append close. So now we have open, close, open parentheses is still one, and we add one to zero, or close parentheses, give me as one. Now because our open is one, and our end is two, we haven't hit our base case yet. So we try adding in open parentheses, and incrementing our open. So we get this. And once again, because we hit our base case, we add a close parentheses and we add that as an answer. So then we finish our frame, we go back up and now back at one, one again, because our close is the same as our open, we cannot try adding a close parentheses. So we go back up to one zero, which also doesn't hit the condition. So we go back to zero, zero. And then at zero, zero, because both our closed and open parentheses that are the same, we also don't try closing our parentheses. And then we just exit our helper function. So at this point, we have our answer, so we just return it. Now let's give this a shot. Hit submit and And there we go. And this is how we would solve the generate parentheses problem using a recursive backtracking solution. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, if you like this video, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to get daily updates. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video and have a great day.